Gums, Darren here for Case of the Mondays, episode three. Now that we're after midnight, we're ready for this week's random set of words. So let's have a look at this week's case. The first word will be polyplacephora, cloaking, and rejoint. All right, we'll see you guys in a week. This week's word is cloaking. cloaking. To cloak is to cover or conceal as a disguise. The very first type of disguise would be a mask. Now, the first mask was found in France. It was of a sorcerer on a cave wall. He was two and a half feet tall, and he had all the different limbs of different animals. This was found about 13,000 BC, and it clearly portrayed a sorcerer wearing a mask. Back in the Middle Ages, doctors used to wear masks shaped like duck beaks because they thought that if they inserted herbs, it would prevent them from getting the plague. They used to be too paranoid to touch their patients, so they moved them with a stick. This is how some doctors became known as quacks. Concealing one's face wasn't the only way to gain an advantage. The Greeks tried to invade the city of Troy, but they couldn't because the city walls were too strong and powerful. So what they did was they offered a surrender by offering a gift of a horse. Concealed inside were a few soldiers. Now, when the people went to sleep for the night, the soldiers got out of the horse and pillaged the entire city. You'd think that people would have learned over the ages of this kind of deception. World War I, the German submariners were knocking out anything out of the water that looked like British attack ships. The British came up with an interesting idea. The plan was to dress up the soldiers as innocent civilians. The crew had even choreographed scenes where they'd bump into each other and act panicked as soon as a German U-boat was spotted. That's when the Germans would relax and approach, and suddenly the British general would give the order and all the trap doors would expose how much heavy artillery they had. They would hide guns in places like false walls and fake lifeboats. And before the Germans had an idea of even what was going on, their ship was already on fire or sunk. Over 70 German submarines actually fell for this, making this the seventh leading cause of death for German submariners in World War I. But sometimes, there's more than one way that a person's identity needs to be concealed. In World War II, some of the Jewish people would try and escape to neutral Sweden, and what they would do is they'd hide in fishing ships with false bottoms. Now the Germans eventually caught on to this, and they started catching these people by using bloodhounds. Ernst Moch was a Danish doctor who created a powder made of rabbit's blood and cocaine. What this did was this masked the scent for the bloodhounds and allowed over 7,000 Jewish passengers to escape freely. After the war, he received medals from all the kings of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. A different type of disguise is known as camouflage. Some animals have been doing this process for millions and millions of years. The modern form of camouflage that we know today was actually invented in World War I by the French. Camouflage actually meant to blind or to veil. Now, what they would do is they'd bring an artist to cloak their troops and their equipment with these patterns. In California in the 1940s, Lockheed had an airbase that they wanted to conceal from enemy sight. What they did was they put camouflage netting over the entire base and surrounding area. They even put houses, cars, and fake trees in and around the area. It got to the point that they even hired actors to walk around and ride bicycles to make it look like a residential zone. Another example of hiding in plain sight happened in 1962 during the Cold War. What had happened was in West Virginia, they needed a place to house government should there be a nuclear holocaust. So they built a shelter underneath the Greenbrier Hotel. This underground bunker underneath the hotel was designed to withstand the blast of a nuclear attack from 15 to 30 miles away. It had over 112,000 square feet of room in it. They had to keep it secret from the public, 
so they coincided the building of it with the addition of a brand new wing. One of my favorite stories of camouflage occurred in 1942 during the Second World War when an entire fleet of American, Australian, British, and Dutch ships all were sunk by the Japanese, except for four remaining ships that were left by the Dutch. These four boats had one hope, and that was to make it all the way to Australia through Japanese infested waters. But within just a couple of days, all but one ship had been destroyed. The Abraham Crindenson was very slow and had few guns, so they did what anybody in the right mind would do with this ship. They turned it into an island! Vertical surfaces were painted to look like rock cliffs, and they cut down trees to make it look more like a jungle canopy. Now, since they were in Indonesia, home to 17,508 islands, they were kind of hoping that the Japanese wouldn't realize that overnight, suddenly, there was 17,509. Is that island with an antenna moving? After eight days of sailing like this, they finally made it to Australia and rejoined with the Allied troops until the end of the war. Now ships don't just disappear, but one year later, the urban legend goes that one ship did just this. In 1943, the USS Eldridge is said to be a part of something called the Philadelphia Experiment. Some people had claimed that the ship had been rendered invisible or cloaked to enemy devices. Now if you want to try an experiment of your own with cloaking, all you're going to need is a couple of Pyrex beakers and some vegetable oil. Pyrex and vegetable oil have the same light refraction, therefore it renders the second beaker invisible. Duke University has now created the very first type of actual cloaking device. What they've done is they've taken microwaves and created something called a metamaterial. Now, a metamaterial is something that's not found in nature and has a very interesting property. What it does is it bends light around an object, much like water passing around a stone. The very first experiments of these have now already been started with visible light. Japanese researchers had developed the very first types of preliminary cloaking devices. What they do is they take advantage of using a camera behind the subject and transmitting that image to a computer that projects it onto the wearer's clothing. Although this isn't a true invisibility cloak, it is the closest thing we have at this point. As you've noticed, most cloaking devices are used for military applications. Scientists are saying that the first usable cloaking devices will actually be within our lifetimes. The question is, will we be ready for it?